I'm gonna give you a quick yet in-depth guide on how to configure a stacked column chart in Microsoft Power BI. So let's go. Assuming you've already got some data in here and the two fields that we're gonna use is going to be a amount and that's an integer and, that, and then also a date. So I'm gonna use both of those just by clicking them on after I turn on the stacked column chart. And then I'm gonna build this out a little bit. And by default, this is filtering by year and it's providing yearly sum of the integer that I provided. Now, looking over here in the first setting, which is the x-axis, if I wanted to change anything about the dates, I could simply by, uh, and I'll just demonstrate here, if I took out a year, uh, then we would have uh, reflected here quarters, and then if I took that down to months, um, I could take out days, months, however I wanted to do, uh, but also what's relevant to know is if I bring in the date um, in its entirety, and then just focus on something like uh, the year. Uh, I also have the potential to drill down if I include, um, let me add these back in here. There's this, this function says drill down. So if I actually wanna see um, the, those things like months, quarters, and then days of the month, I could also see that as well. So um, as a function of the widget with just the native buttons that are inside of here. So we actually don't need to structure it to be just years, quarters, months, or day if we want to, um, that's up to us. We have the y-axis reflecting the sum, which is fine, but also know that you could reflect average or any other number of items here like uh, count. And in this case, this is a series of financial transactions. So this would actually show the series of financial transactions. And what's interesting here is you can see there's actually kind of a, a curve where there's actually less represented here and these are kind of even but we as we add the sum you can see the expenses increase gradually even though the count of transactions remains remotely the same so we can get some insight there so if we want to uh, create some sort of legend we could do something with um, the date we could bring that in and we could change uh, let's let's be uh, specific about this we could say Hey, I want to I want to see only the uh, the year or something like that, and and we can go ahead and if I go in here and drag year into legend, then we should get a legend that's based just off of the year. So we could do something like that. That would be pretty cool. Now with the tool tip, the tool tip is what you get when you hover. So if you wanted to add any other items inside of that, um, like if you wanted to add a month or something like that, or whatever you want to do. In this case, that actually didn't work out too well. Oh, that was because I added it into small multiples. It's added into tooltips, great. Um, so you see right here, earliest date of that year is reflected there um, because uh, as a whole, we just have date and I could try to bring in month here. Let me try that one more time. Um, yeah, that gives me the first month. So see, April is always the first month reflected in that year for some reason. And that's probably just how the data is being read. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next tab. This is format our visual. And what we're gonna do here, um, actually let me go back and for the legend, I'm actually gonna remove that. I'm just gonna leave this normal like that. I'm not gonna mess around with the legend for this purpose here. Let's go back to format our visual and let's start with the X axis. So we turn that on and off and this is a good idea because generally it allows you to see what you're, you're messing with. We can see we have um, the years as kind of labels down there on the bottom. Um, although not labels in the exact Power BI terminology. And we can see if we change the, the type here um, from continuous to categorical, categorical, we get this tiny shift here. And the difference here is really that continuous, it just shows like an increasing stack where categorical is more of a uh, reflection of just like these years as categories. So I like to go with continuous. Um, we can do here is we can set a range and so like if we wanted to say that we just want to see from 2018 as a minimum and then we just want to see that up we could and uh, we could set a max as well so we could set like 2020 and then that would give us a max now we set logarithmic scale here we do see those um, values uh, pass away and we do see a little bit of a change in how these bars are reflected here that's not really going to serve us too much with the dates but the next setting invert range would give us this weird back and forth thing, which dates don't go from the past to the future, um, right to left, they, everything goes left to right. So we'll keep that as is. 
And then let's go to values here. So this is actually really cool. We can mess with the font and aesthetic right here. So I'm actually gonna, just gonna take this and make this the font din. And you may have that and make these really big and then turn these to just a bold black font. And then here, um, if I had a numerical, these are years, so I don't need to worry about the display unit. But if I had money, I might wanna use the display units here. Now the title is explanatory that those are years. So I'm gonna turn the title off because we can read that these are years and, and that's fine. So let's collapse this. Let's move on to the Y axis. So we turn the Y axis on and off. We can see that's representing uh, some dollar figure here, although we don't have currency reflected just yet. I'm actually gonna move this into the middle of the screen here. So if we look at the Y axis, we have a similar situation here where we could reflect a minimum, maximum. Uh, we could do this logarithmic value here, which is just kind of interesting because this reflects 50,000 to look almost the same as 155,000. So depending on the values that might, that might work out, but we do want to show this, this significant increase here and keep it kind of proportional. Um, this is unique because it flips it upside down, but once again, most things don't read like this. Usually it's left to right and then down to up in increasing values. So we just want to keep that to where people would uh, understand it if they read it. So um, for the values, I think I'm gonna increase these as well to be nice, big, and bold. And then we'll change this to a black color. And for display units, we have um, automatically set to thousands, which is great. But you see if I change it to millions, we get, you know, uh, if I say in 2019 that this value was, the spend was, you know, it's 107,000, but it's actually 0.1 mil. It's like technically yes, but I'd rather see thousands. Uh, if I say switch axis position, this is kind of cool. And honestly, this works out sort of either way, depending on how you want. And then once again, with the title, um, not super concerned about that, but I actually want to go back a step. And uh, let me close this out. Now, this sum of amount, this sum of amount by year, we can actually change these just by typing inside of here. So if I wanted to say like um, sum of dollars, right here, then that would make a lot more sense. And then over here inside of the um, X axis, uh, we have just year is kind of self-explanatory. So it's a sum of dollars by year. So now this makes a little bit more sense here. But um, with that being said, let's remove the title. Um, that's not uh, super important as we have it up here, a sum of dollars by year. And we can see, you know, 2018, it wasn't uh, the year 50,000 and 2018 dollars but um, that's just that's just common sense right there so um, for the grid lines these things in the back here we can turn those on and off and we actually have vertical and horizontal that we can leave on or turn off and I think for this purpose we can just leave on some horizontal ones and we can just make them um, solid and make them a little bit darker um, but not much and I'll just keep them at uh, now there's actually some interesting things you could do here. You can make these really big, kind of depending on how you want to style this, uh, but we'll stay with one and we'll just collapse those grid lines. Now for the zoom slider, that would allow us to zoom to see certain ranges and kind of expect um, within uh, different levels and different time frames and, and, and work with this. So this, depending on the size of your data set, can be really valuable, but where we're rocking just a couple of columns here four columns, we don't really need that for accessibility reasons. So we can kind of just turn that entirely off for this. Um, for columns, we can actually do something neat where 2021 is the highest spend in the budget. So we can actually say, hey, let me see all the columns. And then I'm gonna say that this is a warning point because let's say that I don't ever wanna spend above um, 125K per year. And let's say that this budget here is, re is reaching above 125K. We can mark this as a year in the red. But regardless, if you wanted to change these colors any type of way, you could do so just by changing that. One thing I wish is that there was a palette here, but that's something that's just not inside of Power BI at this version that I have. Now, if we go to data lab labels, this is really important. So if we set the position right now, we have auto, but um, this actually has a little bit of inconsistency and you can see the labels are kind of small. So what I'm gonna actually say is let's uh, switch this around. I encourage you to play with this to see what works out the best um, because there's not necessarily a one size fits all answer to this. But for 
this situation I really like inside center. I think that makes a lot of sense. And if you say horizontal or vertical, we'll actually get different results. I'm gonna go with horizontal. And then with label density, um, we're not gonna really worry about that too much. As you can see, it's not making a strong difference right now. And we're gonna just leave that alone. Now for the values there, well, we can go ahead and we can crank this up and we can probably gonna change that to our font that stacks for everything and it has this really nice font. And uh, I think this is actually the same one that we see on a lot of um, different charts that have to do with politics numbers. It's like a really nice modern font. So I really like that. And it has a really nice bold contrast here. And we can go ahead and just leave that as it is. And when it says display units, we're already in thousands so we can leave that alone. The only thing we might want to do is say overflow text on so that way if there's ever any overflow that and that means basically these letters becoming too big for their box so like a situation i could demonstrate is like if i took this up to be like um 50 um, font size or maybe even larger i don't think you'll even let it do that um then we could we could experience some situation where that was the case but uh here we're not gonna we're not gonna need to worry about that and for background this is if we just wanted to put a background on the label like that to give it a little bit more contrast and um, or we're not gonna worry about that we're just gonna keep it simple for this case and uh, if I go to plot area background this just allows me to put in any image and then fit it however I'd want so if I want to put some sort of um, any sort of graphic or texture or any sort of actual picture in here I could do so now going over to general if you go to the properties you can see that we have some ability to change the size which is uh, sort of dynamic at this point but we could set that up um, we could lock the aspect ratio we could change the position and then also we could make this uh, responsive or non-responsive I like to keep uh, responsive on and these are just sort of advanced options you may come upon that uh, might be valuable and we could turn the entire title off um, and then what's also valuable is we could uh, change the title here make that look a lot nicer and then uh, change the you know the heading status for that and then align that actually to the center of the frame and we could give that uh, like its own background if we wanted to so if we wanted to set some sort of um, you know, sort of subtle offset right here like this gray and then actually make the text color like a white we could do something like that and we could have a title be that way now for um for the entire chart we could set a background here and we can do you know something subtle like that or we could do something um like this as well kind of just depends on how we want to do it so i'm just going to leave it as white and um that's just all uh, aesthetic features here. Now, uh, with this, in this configuration, this isn't really something that uh, we would need to worry about, but this, these header icons right here, now this is just another aesthetic thing if we wanted to blend these in uh, to the, the overall aesthetic here, we can make these um, to where these were like white icons and uh, we could even give them like a border or something like that so they showed up a little bit more cleanly um, but for this case we're gonna we're gonna keep that just uh, slightly modified there now tool tips tool tips are what happens when you hover over this if we say uh, tool tips off then they just don't show up when you hover but what we could do here is we could say hey you know give me a default tool tip or we could say hey give me a report page tool tip um, which is just slightly different and uh, if we go to uh, for alt text this is sort of like an accessibility thing for screen readers so if we move on here we do have um, an x-axis constant line so if I want to go in here and say hey let's add in um, this line so I can say like this line is like 80,000 right um, in this case this isn't really something that's going to be super valuable for us and um, I'm actually going to take that off so that doesn't cause any issue. But we can inject lines um, over uh, over this this area here, and um, what might be a more applicable is a constant line. So if we want to say something like, let me think of something. So if I say like, let's see if I do eighty thousand again. Yeah. So eighty thousand. This is a constant line. So this is this is 
uh, horizontally right across here and so I can make this something like a uh, red or actually going along with my use case earlier where I was like anything above 126 or 125,000 is uh, like you know above the spend line um, I could take that transparency down and then I could call this like you say like above um, uh, yearly budget okay and then I can make the position in front but I could also put it behind it kind of depends on how I want to do it and then I could give it a data label so if I turn that data label on I could do something nifty where I could say like the style is the name and see right here the name popped up and I could actually say well let me make that red as well you see that's above uh, yearly yearly budget and I could set that to be um, under or over the line in this case I'll say um, over I guess that to be on the left or right side, but you see that disappears whenever I hover that um, to the to the right side there because um, it's it's already it's blending into the red. All right, cool. So the last thing is pretty cool over here is I could add um, an error bar, and so an error bar is something where I can basically say like, okay, let me get an amount, um, and I could set like a sum or an average of the amount. But what makes more sense for this, instead of saying by field. I'll say by percentage. So I'll have like a, a margin of error. So like, let's say that well, I know that I probably spent this, but there's like a margin of error that's maybe like, um, let's say we might be as like as much as like 5% under or over. So then this little guy will tell us like where the under or over would be. And um, what we can do is we can do some a couple different aesthetic, um, aesthetic things with that. We can make this just be um, just like a uniform black. Um, we can make this a lot bigger if we wanted to. Kind of depends. We could do a shape like that, however we want to go with it. Um, and that's just sort of however we want to do, right? So it's like a really big, like kind of Roman numeral type looking thing. And what we could do is we could give the that, that a label, and these are gigantic right now, but we could actually sit, drop those down to like a like a 10 pixel just indicator of what the margin would actually be based off of the percentage that we provided. So here it's showing like, well, the, you know, we could have spent between 163 or 148, but like we're reporting at 156. So just sort of depends how you want to do that there. And uh, one thing that's pretty important is to pick your color. And in this case, black is going to be a good uh, color because um, I don't think we can really get, I'm pretty sure there's no, um, there's no formula to get an actual like um, like white down here and then black up here. So one thing to highlight is you could do different label formatting. So this like shows like plus 8K or minus 8K. That's great. Um, this also shows the percentage. But if we want the abs actual value to be calculated, then that's cool. Um, you can also do these little backgrounds, and that's pretty clean as well. So I think I might do something like that. Um, and uh, just make that subtle and then just turn the transparency down and then this is how you could probably get away with making a white label inside of there and that looks really good so um, all that's a, although it's a little bit fat um, just sort of up to you know whatever whatever people want to do so you know see we've set up this uh, in its entirety the aesthetics could be argued you know whether it goes one way or the other, but ultimately we do have at this point in time a fully configured stacked column chart. So it kind of just goes to, um, you know, just goes through what, whatever you want to do to to make this happen. Um, one thing that we could we could talk about real quick is if I wanted to uh, say that all of these things were dollars, I would want to uh, go to the amount and then column tools and then say that I want to format this currency as a dollar and then it will show up as dollars all around here. So that's like the final touch on that. And that is how to configure a stacked column chart. Thanks for watching.